there, it's Sandra here from Creative Spain and today I have a completely different project. I have a Canon printer and I went onto the Canon Creative Park website and I found something to make which I think would be quite good fun. Now this is actually supposed to be a 3D model sloth. I have no idea how easy it's going to be put together, but I figured the easiest way of cutting it out, definitely for me because I'm really bad with a pair of scissors, is to use my scan and cut. So all I did was I took the PDF from the, um, the download, I exported that as a PNG, put it into my software and where all these pieces had little numbers and things over it, I covered those with blocks and circles of white because I don't want my brother Scan and Cut to be picking up those marks. But it is definitely a Canon project and if you want to make something like this, you're going to have to go to the Canon Creative Park website and have a look and find what you want to actually make. So I've got it onto my mat. I've just used a very thin card to print it on at the moment and I'm going to put it to my scan and cut and see what the results are like. So this has gone through my scan and cut and I'm just going to remove the excess. As you can see it has cut these pieces perfectly which has saved me a lot of time in trying to hand cut them. I better look at the instructions now, I suppose. The first thing they tell you to do is to write the number of the part on the piece on the back of it. Now, I've got my laptop by my side with the original image, which still obviously has the numbers on it. So I can do that quite easily. So on here, it's pretty simple. If you look at the instructions, you have to put glue where the dots are and you can just literally put pieces under each other to eventually create a three-dimensional object. There's a couple of little areas where obviously the um, cutting machine didn't actually cut inside an area but I've just snipped those with a pair of scissors. So this should go together relatively easily and I'm just going to put glue on it and start gluing away. So this particular one I'm using is just my usual glossy, sorry, non-glossy, my matte varnish. I'm using this because I happen to have a very fine tip that I can use. There we go, it's coming out. So I'm working from the inside to the outside. I'm just going to stick that tab under there. Because if you do the outside and then you do the inside, you're just going to make it rather difficult for yourself. Now so I'll just go around putting the glue where it's needed and overlapping the pieces. And as you can see, it's gradually getting to be three dimensional. So I would imagine the rest of the pieces are going to be very similar. And then changed over the glue that I was using. I tried a silicone glue, that didn't do it. I tried tack it over and over, that didn't do it. Nothing seemed to grab it instantly. So I switched over to my fast drying wood glue and that does it brilliantly. So I'm just putting two pieces together at the moment and I just need to match up these tabs. All I've done is put a little bit of glue on scrap paper and used a toothpick to pick up the glue that I need and then match up my pieces, press together and it's actually staying. <laughs> well, that's definitely an improvement. So I've done that one and the last bit to do on this particular piece is this one here. A bit too much glue there, so I'll just smooth it out with my little finger. There we go. And this piece here goes on there, like so. So far I've got to number six in the directions. It's actually been pretty easy. The only difficulty has been getting the pieces to stay stuck. And 
that just depends on the glue that you're using. I don't normally do much in the way of 3D modeling. So usually when I use a glue, I can press things down and they'll just stay there until they're dry. It's not really a problem. 3D modeling, it's a little different. You need it to be able to glue it. So we're getting there. On pieces five and six, you'll notice there are some dashed lines, a few more than there are elsewhere, and those need to be folded. So that's a mountain fold, and that makes it easier for you to create the three dimensions if you do that. I've already got one of these done. This one is number six, but number five is the same, only in reverse. And it wasn't particularly difficult to put together. Now you'll find on these, where you have all the green dots, those make up the joins on the actual piece you're looking at. And the blue ones are where it joins onto another piece. And that's a handy thing to remember, just so you don't get yourself confused. I've got pretty much all my pieces put together, except for the banana, which I will do afterwards. The first thing they say to do is put the head on the body. So you have a blue dot on here and a blue dot on the other side. And that is pretty self-explanatory. One goes in the back, one goes in the front. And once glued together, you've pretty much got the body done. So a little bit of glue on these two tabs. And we should be good to go. Just make sure you get it in the right direction. So you have the back to the back and the front to the front. Now the front one is going to be pretty easy to put in. You can actually grip that quite well. Just give it a little bit of excess glue that can be gripped. And then the back one can be slid in and you can hold that with a couple of fingers as well till the glue has set. There we go, head on. That's pretty easy. And so next I have to put the arms and the legs on. And those go on in a very similar way. When it comes to putting the legs on, make sure that you put the tab in when there's where they're supposed to go. So the slot there which the tab goes in and make sure you are covering up the white area on the main body of the slot. So you want to make sure that those pieces are tucked inside and not still sticking out. On the two tabs. I have to confess, I think the instructions are very good. I'm the sort of person who looks at a set of Ikea instructions and thinks, oh heck, I really don't like all the diagrams and things. I just find them difficult to follow. Is that that piece? Is that that piece? Whereas this is actually well labelled and the instructions are pretty clear. And stick the tab down. I might just have to find a child I can give this to. Because I think children would really rather love them. Now, not that I don't, but I think it'd be a nice thing to do to give it to someone. All right. I've got the front one in place, that one's stuck, so now I just need to pull this one through from the inside, I think it is probably the best way of doing it. I did cut and try to make out the banana, I didn't really think much of this one so I'm not going to be using it. But I do think the sloth itself is really rather good and it wasn't horrendously difficult to put together. So the difficult thing that I found with getting my glue to stick 
in time for me to want to actually stick the next piece down. If I've got a piece there which has come up, I'll have to really stick that. But the actual process of putting it together was pretty easy. The instructions were clear and concise. It's all done by pictures. And I thought that was a really, really good way of doing it. As I said, I am useless when it comes to putting together IKEA stuff. But this was easy to do, easy to follow. Now you can hang this little guy off of something. You could put him on the edge of a mug or a glass or whatever. And he's really rather sweet. So I think I will probably find a child to give it to that will enjoy having a little toy slot. So the Canon Creative part is a great resource for this sort of file and all sorts of other things. You can get um, vintage cars and carousels and all sorts of things on there. And with the Brother Scan and Cut, it does make cutting them out so much easier. It would have taken me ages to cut that out by hand. Now I did have to do a little bit of clipping, as you saw, with a small pair of scissors, but that was nothing too difficult. Just make sure you do that before you start to glue it, because once you've started to get glue on it, it makes it more difficult to do that kind of thing. But if I can put one of these things together, so can you. Okay, so that's it for now. Bye-bye from me, and bye-bye from Mr Sloth.